Hey guys, in this exercise 11-3, we're going to be focusing on wall sections. So far we've been drawing building sections, and building sections are typically sections that you cut across the entire building. And wall sections are used particularly to design and pretty much build your work. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing you're going to do is you're going to switch to the cross section 1 view. So go under your project browser, scroll down to where it says cross section 1. You're going to double select that and you're going to open that file. You're going to go under the view tab, callouts, under create callouts, and you're going to create a callout. And instead of saying building section here, we're going to scroll down to where it says wall section. Select wall sections and we're going to go ahead and create a callout that goes from here all the way down to creating a callout that will start our wall section there. Callouts are different from section view. Uh, when it comes to how they're laid out, you see how the section views are referenced to a particular section and it goes from one drawing to another. Callouts in particular are only referenced to that particular view. Once you're under the callout view, so this is going to be going on a drawing sheet and you want to have your detail as fine as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in to show you what the wall looks like and what it looks like once you go under your view control bar and go from medium detail to fine detail. Notice how things that are intersecting are now more clearly visible. You're able to see more patterns. You're able to see more line weights. And then lastly, we're gonna go ahead and switch your line weights from a half inch to a three quarter inch scale. Again, that's gonna drastically change your line weights and you should be able to see more of what's going on to put it together. Now you can make those callouts smaller to catch more of the detail. Again, if I was to switch this back to course, notice how everything disappears whenever it's being intersected or cut through. And then I'll go back to where it says fine. So one of the things that I have just recently noticed is that we're gonna have to modify our floor to pretty much align with what the book has it as. So we're gonna go back to the cross section and we're gonna add the additional floor here. We can simply modify the floor by selecting the floor that we already have, selecting edit boundaries, and we're gonna go ahead and go to any floor. In this particular case, let's go to the first floor plan, open view. It is this particular portion where we need to have the floor that continues all the way across. I do not know why this has a double height ceiling here. Let's go ahead and manipulate this. Once we have this completed, we're going to go ahead and press the check mark. We're going to obviously attach. Now that's our floor. Go back to our cross section view. Now the floor continues across, being intersected by the stairs. Go to our detail, call out, and you're looking at the wall sitting on top of the floor. Next, we're going to take the foundation level and we're going to change it from negative one feet, three inches to negative one feet, four and a half inches. This small change of one and a half inches will be reflected throughout the entire drawing set. Just by doing this, you have changed all of your stairs, risers, everything that has been associated with the drawing. Next, we're going to try to take our finishes on this wall and extend them past this so they can overhang onto the concrete wall. How we're going to do this is we're going to go ahead and go under our wall structure. So how we're going to do that, we're going to select the wall that we're, we're under. We're going to select edit type and it'll pull up this particular wall. We're going to select edit structure. And after that, we're going to go under preview and we're going to go under where it says view. Instead of floor plan, we're going to look at the section view. In order to modify this portion of the wall in particular, you're going to select this portion of the wall by selecting Modify. Once you select Modify, you'll be able to select the outer boundary and you should have a small lock that appears after you have selected this small portion of a line that you can unlock. Once you have unlocked this for your exterior membrane, you're going to go ahead and do the same thing for the sheathing layer. and You're going to go ahead and unlock that as well. So both of these have been unlocked. You're going to go ahead and press OK. 
and press OK again. Once you have done that for these particular walls, notice how we have these new additional arrows that allow us to extend our sheathing. You're going to go ahead and make the base extension distance be negative 1 feet dash 4 inches. Upon doing so, you should be able to see that the now the exterior finish extend past the wall and you have your your floor finish across and your stud lands on top of that and your finish extends all the way down. We're going to go ahead and repeat that for the garage portion of the wall. So we're going to go ahead and switch, go to project browser, and you're going to go under the longitudinal section. We're going to go ahead and zoom out. We're able to see the garage floor plan here and we're going to zoom into that portion. Again, we're going to have to create a separate callout for this particular area. So we're going to go under View, Create Panel, and we're going to select Callout. Once we select Callout, we should be able to draw a callout here and double click into the callout to be able to get to this view. Again, we're going to switch the scale to half inch as we zoom in. We're going to go ahead and switch our detail to fine. Pretty much we have a floor, wall, and this foundation wall coming here. Notice how the foundation has already been updated from neg uh, negative one foot three inches, and we have already gone down one foot three inches on another view, so all of the datum are reflecting the same. For the basement wall, what we want to do is bring this concrete wall up where it connects with the foundation. Both of these are concrete members, so in this case, I could extend the floor across and then bring the wall up, but it makes sense for me to bring the wall up and make contact here. So in order for me to do that for all three walls, I'm going to go to the project browser, scroll up to my basement plan view. Once I'm in my basement plan, I'm going to go ahead and select all three exterior walls. Once I have all three exterior walls selected, I'm going to go ahead and change their top constraints from up to level foundation to up to first floor. Now that we are on the first floor, we're going to go ahead and switch back to our longitudinal section. As you can see, this wall comes all the way across, and notice how the floor intersects. We're going to go ahead and go to our longitudinal section callout. In order to merge these two, I could simply slide this back and modify this, but in this particular case, it is easier to just simply go under modify, go under the geometry panel, and select join. I could simply select the floor and I could select the wall and it would join the two geometry together. With that said, that concludes exercise 11-3. Please like, subscribe, and comment below. Follow for more content.